a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. This one was broken a while back, and at the time, I just couldn't get another Raspberry Pi due to the supply shortage. So I've looked at a couple alternatives, such as the Lee Potato and the Renegade from Libre Computers. These are not bad options, and I do have a separate video about each one of them. However, I still needed a Raspberry Pi for projects and things I do on this channel. So I got this kit that comes with a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. This is the 8GB RAM. And for the first thing I'm going to use it is to answer one of your questions about how to use multiple servo driver board with the Raspberry Pi and how to upload the library to control multiple servos. But first, let me show you what comes in this kit here. You get the, uh, I will leave a link in the description to this kit. You get an HDMI cable, you get an Ethernet cable here. This is just the power supply. In addition to the power supply, you have a case, a fan, and a heatsink. These are always nice to have. And it comes with a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. Obviously, these are just the user manual and the warranty card. In here, you have a USB, um, well, a micro SD card USB reader, so you can image that Raspberry Pi micro SD card. Let me show you how you can image your Raspberry Pi. First, you go to raspberrypi.com forward slash software. Of course, I will leave the link in the description of this video. Down here, the first thing you need to do is to download the Raspberry Pi imager. So this is a software that you're going to use to put the image on the micro SD card. Here, I'm using Windows, so I'm going to download this and then install the Raspberry Pi imager. If you're using a different operating system, there is a version for Mac, Obento, or Linux, which you can use as well. From the Raspberry Pi imager, you can choose the operating system and the Raspberry Pi device you are using, or you can download your own custom image. Here, they give you some options. If you go to see all download options, you can see here that they provide a recommended operating system and they give you a couple of images that you can use. So if you want, you can download an image from here and use custom, which I will show you in a minute. Uh, here, there is a Raspberry Pi OS with desktop. There is the same thing with recommended software. So this is a, probably the one that I would go with. And there are some other options like the light version of the operating system. There are some more options here. And for now, I'm going to use Raspberry Pi OS with desktop and recommended software. So I'm going to click download here. And this is going to download the image. Now let's go to the imager and see how we can use it. I've downloaded the Raspberry Pi imager and completed the installation. This is how it looks like. First, here we need to choose our Raspberry Pi. In this example, we have a Raspberry Pi 4. Next, we will choose the operating system. So if I click here, you can see I have multiple options. The last one here, use custom. This will allow you to select the image if you happen to download one from their website. However, you can see that you can also choose the operating system from the list. They even have a recommended option. I recommend going with their recommended option unless you have a specific image in mind, then you have the other options or you can use custom. Now I'm going to choose this first option as it's recommended. Then we will choose our storage. And this is the micro SD card that came with the Raspberry Pi kit. I plugged it in using the micro SD card reader into a USB on my PC. So I'm choosing this here and I'm gonna click next. Would you like to apply OS customization settings? I'm going to say no because I do not want to customize or make any changes. So I'm gonna click no here. All existing data, it's going to be erased and overwritten. Of course, the micro SD card will be erased. So I'm gonna click yes here. And now it's going to write that operating system to my micro SD card. This might take a few minutes. After that, we will boot the Raspberry Pi and make sure it works. I just finished imaging the micro SD card and I put that in the Raspberry Pi. I plugged everything in using the power supply, the HDMI cable, 
uh, that came in with my Raspberry Pi kit, which I will leave a link in the description if you happen to be interested. Now, let's answer your question about installing the library and wiring the servo driver. So this is the PCA9685, and this is a 16-channel servo driver. We will wire it up, and we will need a specific library to be installed on the Raspberry Pi. Now we're at the computer here. Let me show you the library that we're going to be using for the servos. Uh, this is the documentation, and as always, I will leave the link in the description for you so you don't have to worry about remembering any of the commands. But here is the installation command. You can use Python 3 to install this, and it is called the Circuit Python Servo Kit. The, there is another command here if you want to install system wide. And this is the command if you want to install into a virtual environment on your current specific project. There are some use example here. So they give a code for testing and making sure that the servo works, which we will test and try ourselves. Let's talk about the wiring really quick here. So you can see we have six pins here, but we only need to use four. This first one here is the ground, and obviously that's gonna go to the ground on the Raspberry Pi. We skip one. This one here, it says SCL, and it goes to the SCL pin on the Raspberry Pi. SDA, that also goes to the SDA pin on the Raspberry Pi. There is a VCC, this is the five voltage on the Raspberry Pi. The very last one that says V plus, skip this one. This one is just exposing the external power supply. So again, we're only using four pins, and I'll show you those on the Raspberry Pi. Ground and voltage are easy, five volt and ground. These two are gonna go to the equivalent pin on the Raspberry Pi. I'll show you those in the image. They will make a little bit more sense. And here you have an external power. So this is just like a five volt battery that is connected, which is an external power supply. Make sure you get the ground and the V plus or the positive correctly on the right side. Here I just plugged in some servos. I have one on channel seven. I have one on channel zero and one on channel two. Now let's look at the Raspberry Pi quickly here. So this is the Raspberry Pi wiring. We have the five volt here, the ground, and these are the other two pins, the SCL and the SDA. Now let me show you those pins on the Raspberry Pi documentation pinout. First, we have the five volt, which is this pin I'm using. Obviously, you have another five volt if you want. You can use either or. We have the ground pin, so let me see if I can do this. And I'm using this for the ground. There are other grounds, so you can obviously use a different one if you want. I'm using the one over here. Um, let's also pick these other two colors. Uh, I have the SDA and the SCL over here. So these are the other two pins. These are the four pins we need to use. And uh, now let's go to the Raspberry Pi, install the library and run the code to make sure it actually works. So just remote desktop into my Raspberry Pi. And uh, if you wanna learn how to remote desktop into a Raspberry Pi, I'll make a separate video. But for now, I did open a terminal window and I copied this command line from the documentation that I showed you earlier to install the library. So type that command in there. You can just copy and paste, hit enter. This will install the library unless you already have it. So that will be the first step. If you run into this error message that says externally managed environment, in the description, I will leave the command line that will fix that error for you. After that, I copied that test code that they have on the documentation. I did not modify anything. I just literally copied it from the uh, documentation and I have it here. So now I'm gonna run it. This is the 
IDE. So let me show you where I got this from. If you click here under, so you click that Raspberry Pi logo under programming, there is this uh, IDE here, uh, Tony, I think that's how it pronounced, and it's the Python IDE for beginners. This is the IDE. I just copied and pasted the code in here, and you can run it from the play button here. Now I'm going to run it and I make sure that the servo works and I will show you that here on the screen. Now, uh, my servos are working and what I want to show you, the last piece that I modified, you do need to go here under preference and under Pi configuration. So Raspberry Pi configuration. I'm going to click that. Under configuration, if you don't have, so this is the configuration page, you can see under interfaces, this here says I2C and make sure that it is turned on. If you don't have that switch turned on, those two uh, ports will not work as expected on the Raspberry Pi, the, uh, the two pins that we needed aside from the ground and the VCC. So make sure you enable that. After enable the, enabling that in the config, run installing the library, copy and paste uh, the code in here. Make sure that the servos are connected to the channels as it's indicated here. You can see this is servo one, and I think there is the other servo here is zero. So yeah, you have zero and one. Uh, this is it for this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.